have phones and you can open Facebook. I'm going to show you a couple places to go to follow us, follow our work, things of that sort. First off, I'm Harry Crossland, also known on Instagram and Facebook as Bishop Cosplay. Um, I also run, I call my other two troublemakers. <laughs> um, I run a Facebook page as well called um, Cosplay Spectrum. And it lives on Facebook, it stays on Facebook, there's no Instagram or anything like that. Um, what Cosplay Spectrum is for is to showcase cosplayers no matter where you come from, what your background is. So you're not going to find the, you're not going to find a constant stream of skinny model-like people. You're not going to find a, a constant stream of, of people always in armor. Um, we more or less try to run it off of whomever submits so that way everybody gets some shine. So that's the purpose of that. Um, this is Corey. Corey, you, you introduce yourself. Oh yeah, my name is Corey Morgan. Um, my Facebook page, easy to remember, straight out of cosplay. I couldn't believe nobody had thought of that when people were thinking up their own Facebook uh, names. Uh, I've been cosplaying for about um, four years, about a year or two, about a year into it. I met this man here, and um, I'll tell you what. As far as the you know the subject for the panel today, I was really impressed with how um, the shoots that Harry puts on, how well they go. I, his was the first big photo shoot I went to, so. It appeared to be normal for me for to me for a photo shoot to run smooth like the ones he does, and he's going to go over. We're, we're all going to go over everything that goes into those. But you don't get that perspective until you go to another shoot where folks start late, if at all. People come in late, want to get ready, don't have a plan, and everybody's sitting there wondering, man, what's going on with this thing? Yeah. So I've been doing group shoots here at Baltimore Comic Con for going on seven years, I want to say. Um, initially, when I started out, we were doing two a weekend. We were literally doing one on Saturday and one on Sunday. And I'm not going to lie to y'all, they're tiring. So it became a thing, we got to pick a day. And I think this year is probably the first year in about three that we actually did it on a Saturday again because when we were doing them on Saturdays, the con was asking us to move them because of the costume contest. This year, I, I, I put my foot down. I said, no, we got to do it on Saturday because when we try to do it on Sunday, fewer people show up because Saturday is the big day. And um, part of the inspiration was, of course, when you look at other places like San Diego, Dragon Con, and things like that, you know, of course, they always have these giant group shoots where you got about a billion and one people in the pictures. You know, Baltimore doesn't get that much shine, but that's okay. The thing of it is, it's like people still want to have a venue so that way when they come out, they can show that, hey, you know, cosplayers have a presence here as well. So, the first thing I'm going to start you off with is what's called the six piece. And we've got one child in the room covering her ears. <laughs> Prior planning prevents piss poor performance. And let me ask, how many of you in here are photographers? How many of you in here are cosplayers? Even the non-obvious ones. How many of you in here do both? Okay. So, the reason why I put this together is because, um, yeah, like Corey said, there are a lot of people out there that do shoots. And depending on how they're done, some of them are haphazard. Some of them, people don't have a plan. There are many things that people do, and I'm not going to say they're doing them wrong or they're doing them incorrect. It's just the fact that the matter is, you know, sometimes people want to do a group shoot and are unsure, like, okay, well, how do I put one together? What, you know, do I need a plan B or a plan C? What about my location? So I'm going to break down, like, everything because, you know, even though Baltimore Comic Con is the last big con in this area until, say, MAGFest and Katsu. I know a lot of people want to get together and say, well, hey, I want to do something at, at, at MAGFest. I want to do something at Katsu Con. I want to do something at the next show that I go to, but I don't know how to go about putting it together. So 
you know, I put some things together, and if we miss things or if we don't answer things, you know, we're going to have a, a Q and A. So you know, just just ask. So we're going to look at things from the planner side, the photographer side, and you as a cosplayer. So let me let me ask. By show of hands, how many of you all have, have been to a big group shoot recently? And with the people that put their hands up, um, have you been to a group shoot where things just didn't run right or, or, or things just was kind of off? Be, be honest. Let me start with you. What was the main issue with yours? Gentleman over here. Uh, I, did, I went to one recently at New York Comic Con, and it was a DC photo shoot. And it's just New York Comic Con is so huge, and you say DC, you get 200 people out there, it's like hurting. And pets. and I think I know who she. And there's about. no there's no real yeah. space can read that's well lit that can accommodate 200 people because mm -hmm. you're doing it inside the hall itself. Right. And it's when you're taking over an inside staircase. Yeah. And so now you only get like the middle section. You still have people trying to get through and walking on the other sides and like we just all lined up one long group in that middle of that staircase. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly which one you're talking about. And I'm gonna give that brother credit. He tries, but yeah. New New York Comic Con it's really is its own them. beast. Yeah. You you're lucky you can do anything there. And and I'm gonna I'm gonna give them credit where credit is due. It's amazing that every year they get that amount of people out there. And there's still some things that they could do better when they run it. So that's the first thing we're actually going to break down. When you're the person that's organizing the event and you know the venue or you have an idea of the venue. And let's just say I'm in the area. I can go take a look. First part of planning your event is you need to know where you want to do this event. Okay. I'm going to look at this location. I'm going to estimate this amount of people coming out. I'm also going to estimate whether or not this is a well-used area, like what you were saying, if it's lit well enough for, um, for the pictures, you know, the photographers that are going to be taking the pictures. You know, do we have enough light to, to get decent photographs? Um, do I have to worry about it being in a fire escape zone? Because Lord knows we go to a con. The first thing we see, oh my God, these are some beautiful staircases. That's a fire hazard. You can't do your shoot thing. <laughs> so yeah, if, if, if you can, you go, you take a look at the location. If you can't go, find somebody that can get to it. You know, it, and, and of course the best time to do it, if, if possible, is during the course of a con. So let's just say, okay, well, I want to do something next year. I want to do something in a couple of months and everything. Get, get an idea of that space first and see if that's something that you want to do. Because, you know, you might say that you have all these grand plans of, of, of splendor and everything, and then you realize, yeah, I can't do it here. <laughs> so, go ahead, you going to say something? Well, I was going to suggest something. You may already made something that, maybe something that's already on your list. Uh, coming up as well, but in the process of doing your recon for this for for your shoot, and that's pretty much that's exactly what this is. You're doing a reconnaissance run ahead of time, so because you get a group of 7,500 people, we just gonna converge on this staircase, and security didn't know, the con people didn't know, and all of a sudden your shoot's ruined. Yep. What? Um, so what about contacting the people who run the con, who run the oh, facility? Yeah. And that's another thing is depending on the con. Now, I know KatsuCon, in the last couple of years since people like rolling up into someone's hotel and taking it over for a weekend, they've finally gotten wise to the idea that the biggest shoots take, okay, before I jump in, all those who've been to KatsuCon, please raise your hands. Anybody that's ever been to the Gaylord Hotel in Maryland, please raise your hand. Okay. Trust me, you're going to love it. The Gaylord Hotel has two spots. One is the, um, the fountain, and one is the gazebo. And everybody and their mama is always converging on those areas to do shoots. So KatsuCon, the people, the people that run that event, have gotten wise to this, and they know that people want to use that area. 
So they've established early on, okay, we're going to do a sign up. You reach out, you contact us, we'll let you know whether or not you get it, you, you get it for the time that you're going for, et cetera and so forth. So that's the long way of saying, if you know a way to contact the venue or the people that's running the venue, reach out to them saying, well, hey, I want to do a group shoot in this place on this particular date during the course of the con. Who do we have to talk to to procure that space? And they'll either put you through to, you know, who's ever running the facility, or they'll tell you, hey, yeah, you can do it this time, or they'll just flat out say, no, you can't, and then you have to go to plan B. And that's always the thing. You need to have a plan B, and you need to have a plan C, especially when you're doing like we do, we do outside. I've been blessed with some wood, knock on wood. Every year that we've done our shoots outside, it's never rained. Even when it rained that day, it didn't rain during the shoot. Yeah, yeah. And so we, we've been really lucky these past couple years that we've never had it happen. Mm -hmm. And actually the shoot has gotten so big now, finally within the last three years, Baltimore is finally wise enough to send their photographer out there to make sure they get shots because they're getting shots from us right. to use to promote the show. Yes, ma'am. Mention the newspaper. Okay. Oh, dang it. Stand by. We'll feature in the local paper. Nice. <laughs> that's that's how big and how popular our shoot has grown. Paper has gotten a hold of. So yeah, always have a plan A, always have a plan B, and then have a plan C. Have a backup for the backup. Yes, sir. Question. I know, I've gone to the um, DC Convention Center mm -hmm. and where they have an awesome con, and they have that huge, wonderful blue staircase. They're not people are not allowed to do shots on that. No. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. We we and it's funny that you mentioned that because we did it exactly third year yeah. and got ran off before and, and thankfully it was before we got started. But they saw a whole group of us converging on the staircase as soon as we started lining up. Nah. And and the sad part. Is that particular scare staircase? No one uses it. It leads to nowhere. Never. It's well lit. It's and well why? It's right. It's why no one ever uses it. But the first thing, well, that's a fire hazard. If something happens, you all need it. But the staircase is almost as wide as this room. Yeah. If something happens, nobody's getting out through that staircase. Right. Because everybody's on the other side. Right. And that so, staircase is off the lobby. You want to go out the front door. You're not going to go off that staircase. Right. So. But you have to respect the venue. Right. So if, if they say no, but that's, they say no. That's one of those things about doing that. Maybe way you can circumvent that, maybe. But you would have to actually talk to the owners prior to that event coming into play and see if there could be either A, an arrangement, or B, well, it's like funny. A, slot, a short slot time where you might have a guy or a person that well, works in the hotel stay there. I've and done that. Oh, you, yeah. And we go, and again, this is respect of the venue's wishes and everything, but that's how I got the answer of, well, it's a fire hazard. That's the end of the, that was the end of the discussion. I said, like, but no, but no, we're not going to be, it's a fire hazard. This is Washington, D.C., and these are the things that you have to follow. So. But that's, that, that's an absolutely good, uh, good idea in that if you're planning on a shoot in a venue that you don't have any jurisdiction over yourself, and it's going, and it might involve putting people in a place where folks may be, you know, going under their normal business. It would, it's a good idea to let them know this ahead of time, mm -hmm. because yeah. the uh, one of the other, one of the other big places at uh, at the Gaylord for big photo shoots is their big staircase that's up like on the third, second, or third level. Mm -hmm. Now, if we all just rolled up in there at twelve o'clock and didn't say nothing, we're blocking an entire staircase, mm -hmm. and security is going to tell us that we got to go. Right. However, they are amenable to having that staircase be used for the photo shoots. That's part of their scheduling thing between the, the fountain, the gazebo, and that staircase is another one where as long as they know, they know that between this time and this time, we're going 
to have people on site, and they're going to divert folks away. We'll have the con people on site to move people in a different direction mm -hmm. because they're obviously it, it's in use. Because that's the other thing you have to think about is, you know, outside of everything else, you're using space that other people want to use. And I've seen it happen plenty of times when you get lined up and you still have random people going to the con or random people that might be in that venue for something else. Because don't be surprised, there are a lot of convention centers that are like multi-purpose. So they'll have your con going on and then they'll have another event. And if people from the other event are coming through, they'll walk right through. And I've literally seen people just... You have 100 people lined up on these stairs, and you have like five people walking through like, look, you know, screw your shot, we're just gonna walk through because we're trying to get down. So I've seen it happen, and it's not ended well. <laughs> you can get it. But we're gonna, we're gonna move from that. So you scouted your event, you've procured the location. Now you got to inform your cosplayers. And the thing of it is, if you got enough people on Facebook to help you boost your signal. There are so many different ways that you could talk about your event. If you're in different cosplay groups, you can let people know about your event. If you're on Instagram, you can always put out an Instagram blast. But I know for me, one of the things that's worked best is I simply set up an event. And once, a, you know, it's, it's academic. You set the event up, you invite people. And if you got enough good friends on there, They'll boost your signal, and the people that's boosting your signal will boost the signal, and so on. And it will reach out, and you'll you'll have a lot of people that know. Hey, if I'm going to X Y C event, then we know that there's going to be a shoot. And then it doesn't stop there because the thing of it is, day of the shoot or or the weekend of the shoot, you're letting people know as you see them on the con. Well, hey, we're doing a group shoot. Where we're doing it over here. What time? Because I swear, I have people every year, they know we do the shoot on the staircase. They will still come up and ask, where's the shoot? What time's the shoot? I'm going to be there. And they will show up. They will show up. So the thing of it is, is to never stop not giving out that information. Always make it a habit. You set the event up, you post in the, in the event, especially when it gets closer to time. Post updates. Post updates. And the thing of it is, even if you, you can even go so far as if you're already there, take a picture of the area so that way people will know what it looks like. Cause that, that's always the hardest thing. I know even for me going to New, like a place like New York, okay, well, we're going to be in the staircase on the left side of the convention center. Where's that? <laughs> Your left or my left? That's a big right. building. Yeah, yeah. Some buildings are huge. That's why. When I have those exact same people that come up every year, well, where are you doing your shoot? We're doing it on the staircase, on the left side of the convention center, closest to the light ring. I, I, I can't do any further than that. All right, so once you have informed your, photo uh, your, your, your cosplayers, you need somebody that knows how to use one of these. So reach out, same thing, plan for your photographer. Get two or three people, ask them, hey, can you come out and do my shoot? And the same thing, have plan A, plan B, and a plan C. And just like today, my plan A, my plan B, my plan C, my plan D, and my plan E all showed up and shot. Because they show up every year. But the main thing is, even though I can shoot for myself, I'm director. I can't do both. So I have to have somebody that I can depend on. And that's the other thing. You know, you may know several photographers, you may know one photographer. Know someone that knows your style of shooting. Know, know someone that knows what you want. I had one issue one year where, and this was my fault, and this is how you learn. I asked the gentleman to come help me shoot, and I didn't know his style. Almost all my pictures, he zoomed in on everyone, like my group shoots. If I have all of you out here, when I take the picture, I want to see all of you in one frame. I should not have to stitch together my pictures. I got pictures here, pictures there, pictures there, none of them why. So yeah, I mean, the best thing to do is if you, if you know people who regularly go to the cons and they are regularly doing con photos, take a look at their work. Take a look at, the, at what they do and then pull them aside and like, hey, you know, I want to know if I can ask you to come do my group shoot. Sure. Work out an arrangement. You know, they, they might do it for free or if they might want to charge you a little something. Sometimes they're like, look, just, just, just feed me. Work it out with the photographer 
and then make sure they're there on time. Now, you've got your photographer, you've got your vendor, your, your, your venue, you've um, informed the cosplayer. This is where people get stuck making a shoot list. Your shoot list is important. It is imperative because that's the difference in knocking your shoot out in 20 minutes or being outside for two hours. If I may, because um, one of the things that, the one thing that you mentioned is everybody was milling around, it didn't seem to be any direction. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who organize shoots think that the main thing I need to do is just get everybody to the location and the shoot will take care of itself. It won't. There has to be, there has to be some direction. There has to be a, there has to be a beginning, middle, and an end. There has to be a script. Otherwise, you know, 70, 100, 200 people standing around is going to be 70, 200 people standing around. Pissed off. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> After Blurred Con, we were at a, uh, we were at the shoot out in, uh, out in Virginia. And it was a good crowd of people. It was an Avengers shoot. It was 90 degrees outside, and it was 90 degrees outside. <laughs> and it was 90 degrees outside. So stand up in the, in the Flash costume. It's 90 degrees outside, and people in varying costumes yeah. like this. It was more than 90 degrees inside that costume. Yes. Yes. Yeah. For, how, for how many hours? All of them. Show the Captain America costume. Stand up. Okay, imagine doing that. So, we're going to come back again. Know what your weather conditions are like. And if you're going to risk doing a cosplay shoot in that kind of weather, have bam, 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 bam. Have a plan. Have a plan. This so, is what I want to do. Yeah, and, and that, that dovetails into what he said previously mm -hmm. in knowing your venue. If you go out there and you see that it is not a steep incline or some staircases or whatever because you're outside and it's more flat, well, then you need to be able to prepare yourself, all right, how do I, how do, I do a shoot with, on a flat plane with mm -hmm. a bunch of people? Do I have to elevate the photographers? Do I have to get some stairs? Do we have to find some stadium seating? Do but I need a step stool? That has to be ironed out before the plane, before the, uh, the shoot, because it's not the cosplayer's job to put this together. They're expecting that you did it. Mm -hmm. That they get there, all right. So we got everybody. So we're gonna have all the Avengers. We're gonna have all, you know, we're gonna have the Avengers assemble. We'll have all the, the 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 men. We'll have the women. We'll have this. We'll have West Coast Avengers. We'll have, and you're gonna knock this thing out. So don't nobody pass out in the middle of this 90 degree heat. Right. See, and here's the thing, because I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna start one place. I'm gonna jump a little bit ahead, and I'm gonna come back. So when you're assembling your list, know what your theme is. Me, I generally do a general all-purpose thing. Because I want my shoots to be all-inclusive. Now, some of you may want to go do a deeper dive, Well, I want to just do an Avengers shoot. I just want to do a Justice League shoot. I might want to do just a My Hero Academia shoot. It doesn't matter what you want to do. Know what your particular breakdowns are going to be. Because you're going to have a large group shoot. You're going to have these particular individuals, you're going to have these particular individuals, you're going to do the men, you're going to do the women, you're going to do the villains, you're going to do the heroes, you're going to do a fight scene. Whatever you can imagine, jot that down. Jot it down, have a list, have an idea of what that is going to look like because you don't know who all may show up. And sometimes you might want to have to substitute, you're going to have to play around with that list because, like for instance today, I wanted to do Star Trek and Star Wars, right? And there was none. There were no people there, so like, okay. Doing Yeah, he'd have been all by himself. Yeah. So, okay, we're going to move to the next one, you, you know, and also be prepared to improvise. But the thing of it is, that list brings us to the next part, which, jumping ahead a tiny bit, when you go to do your shoot the day of the shoot, okay, I need Marvel versus DC. And as you're doing that, once everybody gets ready to shoot, okay, I, I, I have an idea what my list is. Okay, so for the next next um, shoot, we're going to do these people because guess what? As you're doing that Marvel versus DC, as long as people know what the next thing is on that list, they're prepared. So that when you call that next thing out, okay, we're going to do all the men. All the men already know they need to move forward. That, that timing is crucial because right. if you say we're doing, if you wait until after you stop that part of the shoot to say next we're going to do DC, what you wind up with, everybody's quiet. Everybody's, because they're posing, they're standing still, they're quiet. That's the perfect time to make an announcement because nobody's talking. Now, mm -hmm. when you say three, two, one, 
Stop. Everybody gets up, they're milling around, they're talking about what happened. Mm -hmm. Nobody's listening to the next to the next suggestion. So now it takes time to get everybody back focused mm -hmm. on you so you can tell them what's next. And that's if, valuable if, time. If y'all haven't realized, this is really just a one-on-one -on -one of herding cats. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and um, everybody, I was late. I was buying stuff from stepmom. So, um, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm one down. I, 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 yeah, I, I've done quite a few shoots with him, but then I've also done a whole hell of a lot of shoots down in um, Dragon Con. And in a, in a location like Dragon Con, a con like Dragon Con, if you're late for a shoot, you're going to screw up your own shoot because of the fact they'll usually shoot scheduled back to back to back in the same location. Yeah. Well, so everything they were right. saying on time, if you're, if you're the one who's actually holding that shoot or, or uh, producing that shoot, you should be there 10, maybe 15 minutes before everyone else does so yeah. that while that shoot is going on prior to, yeah, as, soon as, as soon as that shoot, that shoot ends, you can start putting pieces in place, right. getting your photographers in place, getting yourself mentally prepared because of your list and everything else that's going on. Or at least have an assistant there that can say, hey, yo, Harry, um, you need to be... Yeah. Doing blah blah blah, like I was doing with him today. Yeah. You handle the photographers, I'll handle the people. Right. It's everything. I all I said to him today. Okay. Hold on. You, you had a question? No. You. Do I? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you're kind of an institution here at Baltimore Comic Con. Um, Mentally. You wouldn't want to say that, but that, <laughs> yeah. You're being nice. Uh, I mean, I, I've been I've been here since at least 2011, and I think you've been doing your shoots at least that long, if not longer. Yeah, it feels uh, like uh, it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, I know some of this is for people that are that are learning to do a shoot for the first time. But mm -hmm. when you've been doing it for that long, is there a possibility to get it on the schedule so that it's you're not having to do all the the telling people where it is and when it is? It's just there on the schedule. Hey, there's going to be a shoot at this time at this place. Well, it still kind of comes back, like regardless of how much I got it on schedule because it runs like clockwork. I still have to do it the same way because, like I said, I literally still have the some of the same people every year that'll come. Well, where's the shoot going to be? What time is going to be? And that's why, you know, the thing of it is, it's like if you want your shoot to run well, you can't ever really get lax on how you organize it because that time that you say, okay, everybody know where it is and know, know where it's going to be and everything, that's the time where you end up with the least amount of people because nobody knows. You say the con the, the con the con handle it. Somebody had no. You need to be responsible for your own shoot. And the thing is this, also what helps is sometimes putting together a good crew. You know, you're organizing the cosplayers. If you, if you got like enough good friends to help you out, one of you is ha handling the, 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 the photographers, someone else is handling the cosplayers, somebody's handling something else. And, that, and that's always key because the thing of it is, is like you, you can do it by yourself, mm -hmm. but you're gonna go crazy. Get it yep. Quick you, you will forget sometimes to get into your own pictures. I've done it. Did it today as a matter of fact. You, you will forget to get in certain pictures. That's okay. Because the main thing is you want to make sure that people are, are enjoying themselves. But the thing of it is, it's like know your people and make sure everybody knows what's going on. You know, matter of fact, coming back to your question about informing people and not being lax, you also got to treat it as when I see people on the floor and they're in a costume, and I'm talking to them, well, what's going on, blah, 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 whether it's, their, it's my first time meeting them or somebody I've been seeing for years. Well, hey, look, man, don't forget, I'm having my shoot at such and such a place at such and such a time tomorrow. Be there. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right, I forgot. I'm, I'll be there. Boom. They'll come, they'll bring their friends. As a matter of fact, some of you that seen us do it, we, we literally drag people off the street, too. Because yeah. we will literally see cosplayers walking around, like, what's going on? No, come, 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 come you, shoot. Come shoot. Yeah. Come, be with us. So, everything's going well. You're at the con. You've gotten there on time. Everything's going well. Just like what Wendell said, your first responsibility, keep an eye on your clock. Matter of fact, let me let me, let me touch go, go let me for touch it. The, that, that time thing is extremely important. Even, I mean, especially if you're at a venue where they have other, other shoots mm -hmm. scheduled. The venue and the con is going to start every shoot on time, whether you finished on time or not, because they'll cut yours off. Mm -hmm. Being on time is not just for the director and the photographer. It's especially the case for the cosplayers. There are cosplayers who believe that it's their shoot. <laughs> that we're going to show up. 
I'll show up when I show up and then I'll get ready. And that doesn't work. Nope. Um, and and the problem, the bad thing is there are a lot of folks who are not experienced in running a shoot that they will capitulate to those cosplayers and run the shoot late and everybody's sitting around wondering. I know, I, I used to work for the Secret Service. And what we used to tell folks when you, you coming in and you getting your equipment on or whatever, if your shift starts at 12 o'clock and you showed up at 11.45, you're late. Period. Mm -hmm. You show up at 11.55 and you got to put your stuff on, it's after 12 by the time your shift starts. Harry's shoots start on time. And we joke a lot about it, you know, especially online, but we still it's, get the message right. across. Like, yeah. for me, I ran into traffic coming in here because they scheduled the marathon today, too. And there are a lot of folks who had parking had spots issue, in yeah. garages that they couldn't reach because of that marathon. I was fortunate enough that I didn't, that I was able to reach my parking space. But it still took me 35 minutes longer to get there than, than I thought. I paint my masks on for, for, my, uh, for my cosplay. I planned enough time to get there, park my car, paint up, and then come out to the shoot. I got, to, I got there at 11.46. Shoot starts at noon. I realized at 11.30 that I'm sitting in traffic that I actually have to start painting my mask on now while I'm still on my way to the... Uh, to the shoot. So during the stop part of the stop and go traffic, I'm painting up. Yeah. I'm putting my stuff on and um, because that was showing up late. I'm not going to call Harry and say, hey, hold it up for about 10 minutes. I'm going to be late. Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm one of the people up here on the panel. And that shoot would have started without me. Yep. Like this panel started and, without and, me. And, I, and I'd have got, he'd have said something to me when I walked in. He would, he would have said something. I do it all the time. See, now the thing of it is, days like this, yeah, we, we, we already know what's going on. We already expected it was probably going to be far fewer people. We actually still had a very good crowd. Oh, yeah. You but did. but we, you know, we kind of suspected it would be far fewer because of the marathon. But the thing of it is, I got a reputation. My reputation is my shoots start on time. They end on time. And it's, it's still designed as such that you know, even if you still kind of get there a bit late and I think we might get you in, we might not. But the thing of it is, I've had people in years past that have literally run up to my shoots. Oh, sorry, I'm late. Can you hold up? And I'm looking dead in the face like, no. You know, well, have y'all done this already? Yeah, can you go back? Uh -uh. Thing of it is, when you run your shoots, you have to run it with a firm hand. And I would say it like this, if, if you are the kind of person that's, you know, you, you're a bit shy or you're a bit hesitant and everything, but you still want to do your shoots, you do your shoots. You bring somebody in there that's going to back you up and they're going to lay down the law because the thing of it is, you got 50, 11 other people that showed up on time. And the thing of it is, again, if my shoot starts at noon, I actually get there at 11.45. You get there at 11.45 so that way you can kind of kick around a little bit, you get a feel of the area, and God forbid, if you got on accessories, you get all that together because at 12 o'clock, everybody's already lined up, everybody's ready to position. The only thing I'm doing at noon is telling somebody to start taking pictures. Which is exactly what we did today. Now, there's some costumes that aren't built for speed. Right. Some of those people need to take time to get positioned on stairs. Some people can't climb stairs. Because, of, and I'm getting a little bit ahead because the thing of it is, is when you set people up, what you're looking at is you want to make sure that when you have 60 to 100 people on a flight of stairs or wherever, standing on the ground or whatever, that at least 97 of them get seen because three people are going to be in the wrong spot and you will never see them in the picture. Yeah. It happens. You cannot help that, but you're going to do the best. And when you have that kind of time to set it up, those pictures are going to come out nice. Now, the thing of it is, you've gotten to your location, you started setting up some of your cosplayers, you started checking on people to make sure that they got their costumes on. You set your photography lineup. This happens every year. I get photographers that'll come, and I tell people, these are my prime photographers. My, the, the prime people are the ones that you ask to come out. Remember, your plan A, B, C, D, and E may all show up. This is my line here. Everyone else is shooting, take a step back. I learned after my first or second year because what happened is this. This would be my line right here. Everybody's here. This is where my photographer is. Come on, Lord. Yeah. 
So my main photographer's doing this. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. You got a whole forehead. And then, yep. <laughs> and or, or, or like what happened earlier today. <laughs> uh, oh. Sir, everyone behind the line, I've said this five times. Sir, in the red shirt, you need to take two steps back. And he finally, he finally, <laughs> caught, he finally going on because he's sitting there circling. I mean, he's so yeah. close, he's practically he's, in the shot. He, he, he's he going to take forgot. pictures of the photographers. He he forgot, or he thought he was practically so, the only yeah. photographer yeah. out there. So it, like like Harry was saying, it always pays to have that extra person sitting there watching what's going on, so that you can have someone like me yelling at the folks who are doing <laughs> wrong. You need to take two steps back because you're in front of the photographers. Right. And the thing of it is, when you set your photographers up, also you're eyeballing that section to make sure that you see what the photographers see because the thing of it is you got a hundred human beings on a flight of stairs you want to make sure all hundred of those human beings are in frame and you need to make sure that you communicate with your photographer are you okay do you see everybody make sure you talk to your photographer do you see everybody the photographer needs to let you know and relay the information I'm good or I need to move back or I need to move up most of the time they need to move back what you want to say, Gordon? As the director of this shoot, let your cosplayers know who the main photographer is. Mm -hmm. I've had more than a few pictures come back where I've got this great pose, and the main photographer's over here. <laughs> and I'm like, yes! So the picture comes back, I'm like this. <laughs> and full poke me tagging me like, who are you looking at? All I see is my butt. Yeah. And in his like, case, all you see is his wings have to yep. yeah, I'm like, He's stalking. I'm like, like you have to be focused on me. If I turn like this, I'm gone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I've seen it. It's, I mean, it's not just me. If if you if you got eight, nine, ten photographers, we need to know which one we're focusing on. That's the primary one. Now there may be occasions during the shoot where the main photographer may signal Harry and be like, I'm good. And somebody else may, you know, call, you know, may call a shot or whatever, and you know, we know to look over there. But for that, for that shot, especially, and it works for, for everybody. Those of us who are cosplayers, we want to get back some good shots. Mm -hmm. I want to see me and these other folks looking right at the, looking right at the camera. Everybody's like this. Like this. Yeah. Yeah. Again. Yeah. And the photographer this. wants some good shots because if, if 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 you're running a business and you're you know, pubbing yourself is doing some doing great group shots, and you have a shot where ain't nobody looking at you. Mm -hmm. Well, they're gonna be like, "Well, were you even here? Was that this is what we're supposed to get?" Right. What, what kind of what kind of Mickey Mouse looking crap is this? That whole yeah. So again, coming back to the idea that you might lose two or three people in the photo. The main thing is when people are starting to get lined up. And staircases are usually kind of easy because everyone's going to be elevated. You're still going to lose a head or two. But when we go to Austin we since we don't have the luxury of using staircases, everybody's on a flat ground. You got to use the, the rule of size, which is basically making sure the shortest people are up front. Mm -hmm. And I always tell people that the very first thing out of my mouth is if the person behind you is shorter, they need to be in front of you. And it's a little bit harder to organize because, again, everybody's kind of flat. So this is this is the thing. This this is okay. The cosplayer's responsibility is to follow that instruction to make sure that they're not just standing there. Okay, stand up, Corey. Over there. I've seen this all the time. <laughs> Corey's ready to get I've his way. I've been in this. This has happened. And literally, guys just come over. <laughs> Wings out like this. Make sure the guy behind you <laughs> is in front of you. Wait, wait, wait. I, I know you even went better. I was on TV one time. Actually, I wasn't on TV. <laughs> Started out I couldn't, that way. I couldn't prove that I was on television. Way. There were yeah. several of us there, and I'm sitting there, and I could, I could see like the monitor, and there was somebody in front of me, but it was live. So I can't be like, I can't tap like, hey man, move. Uh, uh, okay, uh, nope. Uh, uh. I'm sitting there like, don't nobody look, can nobody see that I'm not in the shot? <laughs> and I mean, the whole thing, if I move, everybody else move. Like, come on, wait. The, the shot should have had, should have been me here, down here, or something. But whether it's TV or whether it's still photos, that's important. 
There's yeah. some real good, there's some real good cosplayers that are under five feet tall <laughs> that we have never seen. Because they disappear. They're gone, man. They right. showed up. So, you know, director, the responsibility is to give the instructions to make sure that they know to check to make sure that everybody's in place and to let the cosplayers know, hey, look behind you and make sure that you're not blocking. Because I mean, and I've even seen some short cosplayers that because they have a particular prop, that once that prop opens, whoosh, you've lost two or three people. <laughs> gone. Yeah. They, they've gone. You'll never see them ever again. No, you might see their feet. That's about right. it. If that, well, you see yeah, that top of the head, oh, yeah. top of the head, like the shine off, yeah. off the like off that dome. So yeah, that, that's the thing. So you know, always do your best to make sure that everybody's in focus. If you have to have them adjust the stairs, or or, or God forbid, sometimes put them on somebody's back. I don't know. You do you do what you got to do, because sometimes, like even for me, and you all see how tall I am, I might not be able to make it to the back. So sometimes when I scoot up front, I'm laying across the floor, and I'm asking the people behind me. Are you okay? Can, um, can you see over top? Yeah, good. Go on, and, go on and get your shots. Now, at that point, you're ready to run your shoot. Yeah. You got your list, you got everybody in the place. Start shooting. Don't take five minutes on one shot. Yeah. Everybody's not going to hold this pose five nah, nah. minutes. Some of us, some nah. of us is getting so, up there. Show, show what you usually do, Corey. What's that now? Because that, 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 that's actually an easy pose to do, and I no, can't do No, he has wings. No, that, that's why I said to show that, what he normally does. I'll have, I, I, I'll have poses where I'm down here. Now, you can't hold a pose like that, especially holding your wings for like no. five minutes. So okay. run that shot for maybe 30 seconds to you a know, minute, and then yeah. start that three, two, okay. one closer to that minute time frame so that he can take a break and uh, he, he, he catches his breath. Catch I'm gonna tell you what, breath, some of us is let over. his arms down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, none, no, of us, really? none of us, none of us, all of us, all of us here are, you know, above 45. Yeah. Oh, I mean, oh it, really? Really? Yeah. You us, yeah. yeah. You don't have to up here, I say above 50, but you out of yourself. I'm trying to be cool with it, but you out of yourself, so that's on you. Folks yourself, so that's getting on folks stretching, because they get right. they get their, their, their real pose, and what they do on my hands, do it all kinds of shit. Widow poses. But when they're done, they got, they need a spotter to get back up. Yeah, right. I mean, I, and I tell people all the time, number well, one, I stretch. I stretch. I bowl on Monday nights. I, I'm, I'm, I stretch before I start bowling. Some, one of the young cats said, you stretch before you bowl? I said, I'm 49. I stretch before I eat dinner. <laughs> I, I, stretch before, I, eat. I stretch before I go to bed. Because when you Rossi. Come, as you get further up there, stuff don't just snap back. It just snaps. Yeah. So yeah. don't hold don't hold your shot for no 30, 40, you know. They don't need five minutes. minutes. And I mean, even the photographers were like, I'm good. I, I got yeah. my shot. Yeah. The thing of it is, you allow enough time for your you primary make, yeah. photographers to get their shots. I don't mean, we only need like click, click, click. Because, no, don't turn it on. Oh, I'm not late. taking pictures of nobody. <laughs> just do an example. Because pretty much when your primary photographer will be doing it, it'll be click, click, click. As soon as you see them do this, especially if you're part of that shot, you start counting down. Three. Cause, cause to because now everybody, everybody else in the shot because the, the anybody else point. after that point once your main photographer is done anybody else after that point does not matter right. now you may you may want to change, have tell them to change the pose or something no like but yeah. I'm talking about for that for that for, I'm talking about for that yeah, sequence that main, of shots. Yeah, yeah that's the one that as soon as you, as soon as you see that that main photographer whether it be one two three four of them whatever yeah. the first one drops that you start singling three, three two, two one, one and you end the you shot move the next and shoot. then you move on to the next shot because again here we get away with it because there are photo shoots back to back to back. But again, spots like Dragon Hunter or some of the other cons that I've been to, like at Wizard World, we've done this as well, where you've got somebody waiting to come up on the stage right after you. So, so, so you literally have, you instead of that full hour that you think that you, you said, don't need a full you, hour. You, you, you basically you have about 45 minutes because it's going to take you time to get set up. Mm -hmm. even, even when you're there early, it's going to take you time to get everybody in. And in place, and then to switch in between your different shoots, you know, di different shot sequences on your list. Yeah. So you need to be able to go ahead. Okay, that first, my primary is done. Three, two, one. Change poses, or different group, that or counts. something on those. Like keep it moving. That counts if, down as soon as you stop and be like, okay, yeah, everybody's talking. Okay. Because it's cool. literally what we were just you talking lose, about. You lose time. It's literally what we were just talking about the fact that as you're counting down, people already know what that next set is going to be. Yep. So as soon as you hit one, this group of people's moving out, the next group is moving in. 
Yes, ma'am. Um, this is not only for cosplay shoots, but anytime you direct something, yes. Oh, yes. your voice mm. needs to be loud yes. and, and clear. So use yeah. something to enhance it, but that's important. As well. I've, I've well, shot, don't, don't, end your, don't end nothing that you say with a question mark. Right. <laughs> I've shot weddings, and I've shot family events, and I've used that same technique. I've, I've shot events at work where, okay, well, I need all the, 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 the male doctors here. I need all the female doctors here. I need all the PhD. You do it the same way regardless of if it's a cosplay shoot or even a family event. Because, again, it's like herding cats. Mm -hmm. And if people don't have an idea, if, you, if, you, if you're not showing that you can control the shoot, you're going to have people just standing there like, oh, okay, I'm just, I'm just going to stand here. I don't know what to do next. I'm going to block people. And, or yeah. worse, you'll have somebody. Or worse, you'll have somebody attempt to start running the shoot themselves. Yeah. Hey, cause you have some, you have some alpha males and alpha females. Say, well, I think we should do this next, cause you, know, you didn't tell anybody what was next. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe we should do an Avengers shoot because they said it with some force. But Avengers start done getting together. Shoot. Yeah, and, and well, I wasn't you know here it, then, so. And before you know it, yeah, it it's happening. Mm -hmm. Sadly right. enough. Mm -hmm. I have been guilty of this. Sadly enough, I have taken overshoots because I've watched people run their shoots aimlessly. So I have had sometimes to jump in and like, okay, well look, we're gonna do this. Oh, was that the oh, shoot with the Okay, look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or, 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 or the shoot where there was supposed to be a primary and no one stepped up to be the primary and you just basically took over and became the primary. Yeah. You're talking about the E-Man shoot? Yes. Yeah. And that wound up being a beautiful shoot. But yeah, we got there, everyone, every, and this was the bad thing, the, the cosplayer showed up before the photographers did for that shoot, except for him, because he was there on time. He was the only photographer there on time. And he wasn't even planning on coming to the con, he was only there for the no, shoot. No, no, the sad part is, he came from home <laughs> and was on time. The, the other photographers, the other photographers were in the same they hotel was there that we were. On a Saturday morning. On a Saturday morning. They, they still had it. to go to Baltimore. No. And, and, <laughs> And they were not on time. So when we when we were standing there for 20 minutes waiting to see what's going on, who's actually conduct, conducting the shoot, he showed up and said, "Okay, where's everybody? What's going on?" We don't know. Okay, okay let's let's, <laughs> let's, 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 let's do this. So that goes back to being on time. If you're the one who's actually running the shoot, mm. and the one running the shoot. Be on time. So that way, when your cosplayers get there, if your photographers aren't, you can at least start talking to them. It's, and if you don't have a full idea, get some ideas from them as they're, you know, as you're waiting for your photographer to show up, because they may actually have some good stuff. Like and we then, had two little kids yeah. show up out of the blue earlier today, and they were cutest. I don't know what. I'm like, yo, Harry, if they're still here at the end of the shoot, yeah. we need to get a couple of shoots with just them. Because that's why I was going to say, as you're winding down, you know, depending on what kind of mood everyone is in, and depending on what kind of time you got, you can do what we like to do and say, cosplayer's choice. Let people throw out some ideas. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you don't you don't want to seem like like this is the end all be all. Throw some ideas out there. Because here's the other thing too that a lot of people tend to forget. Mm -hmm. You might have one or two people out there in a costume that don't get in any of the shots. I've seen it happen. Yeah. You know, you nobody knows who this character is. I'm not DC. I'm not Marvel. Mm -hmm. I'm not. not any, I'm not even in a comic book yet. I don't think because Sean hasn't done a comic book yet. Right. But so I'm a character. You, you have to make sure, like outside and, of wearing one, and, <laughs> or, or or a movie or or right. or some of the group shots. You know, because the thing of it is, and he'll tell you too. You know, we've seen shoots that run one and two hours. God only knows what reason. Mm -hmm. You're out there in the heat. You have that one person that's dressed up in this badass cosplay that never gets in the shot because whomever set that list did not yeah, accommodate. Yeah. So, like, you know, even though you have your list, you run through your list when you're done, hey, throw out some stuff because I want to make sure people that we missed get a chance to shot. Right. Or in, the, or in that same breath, they get into that one shot, mm -hmm. but they play so far in the back because they're not one of those primary characters that was mentioned yeah. that you don't see what they were in anyway. All you see is the top of the face, barely. And, and, and when, you look at a, when you look at a picture of a bunch of people, their head looks about that big. And that's as, if, as if they were getting head crushed or something. So that's always a bad thing to do. If you want people, to, if you want to do something like what's, what Harry's done over the years here at Baltimore, being able to do this shoot consistently, you don't want to have people where all you see is, all they see when they see the pictures is their head. They want to see part of their, they want to be able they to see part the of their body. They want to, they they want to, the they want to be able to say, okay, yeah, 
I was in that shoe because there I am. And you see half my body, I was posed real good and I, I look badass. Not, damn, all I see is my peanut head. And, and the sun hit it real good so you, you don't even see that. All you see is like part of my face and this big bright light. This, again, this picture was done about three years ago. And there were people that still showed up today. Yeah, I that. Yeah. Cause we, cause what happened was that this is one of those free papers that they gave. So I grabbed a bunch of them, and a whole bunch of people took them because, hey, I was part of this three years ago. I can still see myself, and I can even see myself on this picture somewhere. Yeah. And that, that 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 that's that's a testament to what we do, is to make sure everybody gets in, everybody gets a chance to shine, everybody gets gets seen. Now. The photo shoot's done, everybody's happy, everybody's gone away. You gotta make sure the pictures get up. Don't forget, most of you have one of these. At some point, even though you have a primary photographer out there, at the very least, yeah, that one's got one of those. Yeah, yeah, Window has one. At the very least, get the cell phone pictures up. Get, get the mobile pictures up and everything so that way people can at least see. Because guess what? If I didn't if I didn't spend an hour, half an hour, two hours at this shoot, I want to be able to see them shots. How many how many people have been to a photo shoot and ain't never seen a picture of yourself? Mm -hmm. I've taken some of the best pictures that I've never seen in my life. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I've taken some shots that I was like, oh, I can't wait to see that. Ain't seen yeah, nothing. Seen. Yeah. I can't prove I was in the shot. <laughs> see, and this again is also why you make sure, you know, when you bring photographers along, you have several. Because I've seen some people that I don't work with anymore, but I've seen some people do great work, but their turnaround time is horrible. Yeah, a year later, you're still waiting for the pictures. So literally. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, the pictures that you just took at Baltimore are being posted and you're still waiting for the pictures for that particular photographer right. from 2017. And, and it's like 2019. And mm -hmm. Baltimore is actually using the pictures you used on the cell phone mm -hmm. before right. you get the professional shots yeah. back. On the flip side, you know, by the time that person is taking a picture, because again, this, this is why you pay attention to the photographers that you get. They turn yeah. around, you get the pictures, and they've done so many different filters or gradients and stuff to pictures and everything. You're like, that's not me. What? No. <laughs> no. Just the cartoon no. version of that mm -hmm. shoot. So that's the thing, is if you if if you have someone that's either running your camera, or if you have a photographer, you work out an agreement as to when those pictures will be ready, because yeah, we want to see that we were there. We're excited about this. We we took our time out of this con. We missed the panel. We missed the photo op. We didn't stand in this person's line. We missed seeing this particular card up. We did all these things. We missed it. Yo, oh, yes. And now we want to see the end result. Where's the pictures? And you make sure you get those people those pictures, especially if you got a couple of people that, that you've done smaller groups, definitely get those pictures up. Those people want to see it. If, if, if like for instance, one of the shoots we did today, we had like the, the, the vampire hunters, the supernatural folks. There's a small group. We want to make sure they get their pictures. We did Avengers. We want to make sure they get their pictures. The big group shoot. We want to make sure they get their pictures. The cars love shoot. All that stuff, everybody wants to see because, hey, this is what they came for. This is what they expect. So are there any questions? Are there any comments? Are there any thoughts? Because we, we've talked. I want to hear from you all. Nothing is too dumb or too silly. The only dumb question is one that you don't ask. Are you on Instagram? I'm on Instagram. Bishop Cosplay. Straight out of cosplay for you. On Instagram, I am Corey1914. C-O-R-E-Y-1914. I have cards if you want to just order these cards. That's right, Big Smooth. Yep, B-I-G-S-M-U. Mm -hmm. Real simple. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how far in advance do you start planning these shoots? Believe it or not, for this particular one, by the time I get home on Monday, that invite will be up for next year. <laughs> now, the, 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 key to, the key to that though, there's, a, there's, there's an important part to that. As soon as you know you're going to do this shoot, start advertising for it. Yeah. Um, it's just, it, it, whether, I mean, and, and I say advertising, I'm, I'm, going to use, I'm going to use business terms, even though you're not charging people to be a part of the shoot, you still have to market this shoot. Yeah. Your people will know, the, the folks are going to know starting probably on Monday that the shoot for next year is on. But if he only just says it on Monday, don't never say nothing else, 
until the day of the shoot, we gonna think it's not happening. Right. Yep. So yeah, allow yourself time to plan. So let me ask you a question. What's the, what's the next um, con you, you're planning on going to? Um, Supernatural con in uh, Arlington, Virginia. Oh, uh, two weeks. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the first, the first, second, third. first, second, third, yeah. Let's just say if you wanted to plan a shoot for that, depending on what you wanted to do, you should be planning that now. But theoretically, at the very latest, two months before. Make sure as the, if you're the person that's planning this shoot, put some updates on there. Even if nothing has changed. Right. You need to just make sure that know there's some new it. stuff going on the page. Yeah, you're getting closer, two weeks, one week. What's your lineup for the shoot? What's everybody wearing? Hey, just a reminder, the shoot's still on. Because you're going to have friends going to say, did the shoot happen? And you're going to have others going to say, I guess it's not happening. And you're going to move them all together. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, one cosplay shoot uh, I was invited to, they asked for what characters that they want at these shoots. And sometimes they didn't want like the same one. Do you plan for that one, just that one, or do you do two or three or whatever? You all have different opinions on that. I'm, I'm going to give mine first, and I'm going to preface it by saying it is an opinion. Because lately what I've been seeing done is people are doing themed shoots where you need X amount of people to do X amount of characters. You can't have like three Captain Americas, four Iron Mans. No, this person's going to do this character, this person's going to do this character, this person's going to do that character. Now, I would, I would say it like this. Those things you need to have well planned. Because if you throw them together, two or three people out of six will not show up. Yep. And if you're expecting 20, especially when your main characters and your key characters are either late or don't show up, your shot's blown. Yeah. I personally am not exactly a big proponent if they're not planned well, because you know we can go back to our He-Man shoot. We were supposed to have three other people that were supposed to show up. Yeah. One person claimed that they left their I suitcase, left my suitcase with the their airport. cosplay in their car at the airport. I'm Who sorry, in the, the hell does that? Come that's on. the last thing that you're going to leave. Man, that's the please. only thing you were planning you, on bringing. You, you, you will leave the overnight that's, bag. That's, that's, like, leave that's, the that's like saying, I left my kid in the car at the grocery store <laughs> and, and, and drove home. Oops. There's something wrong. But, it doesn't make but, sense. But allow yourself enough time to plan it. Allow yourself enough time to make sure that the people that you're asking to be these characters, that they're going to commit and be there. Because there's nothing worse than, yeah, I'm doing an Avengers shoot, and my guy that's supposed to be Captain America, he blew us off. My guy that was supposed to be Thanos, because the big scene that we're going to have is everybody beating up on Thanos, he didn't make his cosplay. Uh, I don't agree with that one, but... That, uh, that's why I said allow yourself enough time to No, make no, sure. no, no. I'm talking about the whole beating up on Thanos part. I'm so, oh, I'm sorry. He plays Thanos. I, 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 I he, Thanos. He has so been beaten upon. No, nah, uh, Thanos beats upon. He does not get beaten upon. Let's correct right that. Well, that anyway. last movie would say different. <laughs> no. You still was whooping the tail. I mean, tell yeah, I mean, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch did, you know, bite up into yeah. it a little bit with that red. Misty. Misty stuff, but that's a whole Play. story. Yeah, but um, getting back to what you were saying, <laughs> when it when it comes to those those theme shoots like that, I, I take it a step further than what um, what Harry was just saying. I only get people I I can depend on. Yeah. If I can't depend on you, and you say yeah I can do this, do this um, do this character for this shoot, and I and I'm giving you a date and a time. If I know I can't depend on you, I'll tell you about it. But I know you're gonna come back three days before me. Like, well, um, I've got to I've got to go. No, I've got to go brush my teeth that day. <laughs> so I'm gonna have I'm gonna have the person who I know I can depend on. Plan actually, B, plan B, plan C. B, B, no, they be they be the actual plan A, and the person who says yeah I can do it, they be the plan B just in case something actually just in case they actually decide they want to show up. I, I only work with folks that I can actually depend on because. I don't like to waste time. Yeah. Main and, thing is this. And, and planning to shoot, it, cause I'm, I'm still in the wait, other bit. Because we, we were going to plan a, for instance, we were going to actually plan a, um, a Shazam family shoot this weekend. And I know plenty of people who do Shazam characters, except for maybe one or two of the characters that we were missing. 
But those folks, so a couple reached out and said, yeah, I, I can do it. I want to be part of it. Like I said, three days ago, I'm not going to be able to make it. I, I'm actually going to be at rent fair. Why in the hell did you say you're going to be able to make it? But in either case, I might see you at rent fair on Sunday, which was supposed to be after the shoot. Oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> so what, what, what we're going to do, what we're actually going to wind up doing instead is, I, t I told the other person that wanted to do that shoot, let's do it, actually do the shoot that we wanted to do in the spring, away from a car, and we get the people that we know are going to be committed to that shoot, so that way, when I drive my behind up to dug on Jersey to shoot it with everybody, then I'm not wasting three to four hours of my time on the road and then a, a day in a hotel, because I'm not driving back another three or four hours after, after hanging out in Jersey all day. I'm going to... And Play and chill. Ashley was was going into yeah. my last point. Is you gotta believe it or not, you don't always need a con to do a, to do a shoot. Yep. Matter of fact, in most cases, I would almost suggest not to. Yep. If you got the right people in your area or people that are willing to come to your area, you can always say, "Well, look, why don't we just do this particular weekend when there's no con going on, nothing going on, and we all get together." Well, you can take your time. Right. You can have some food or yeah. go out for food afterwards. afterwards. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is which is fun in costume. If you yeah. haven't got oh, yeah. if you haven't gone out to, a, roll up a, to a, a, a decent restaurant in costume with a whole bunch of costumes. You haven't done it right yet. Oh. You haven't done it right. <laughs> so you haven't because there was some there was some times we were um, we were shooting some film stuff and we were, all, the whole cast went in costume. I mean, yeah, we, we were kind of yeah. bloodied up and stuff. And they didn't want to serve us at first, but once the second week, they were, the second or third week, they were better with it. But that first time, everybody was like, "Oh crap, what the hell?" Well, we got about five minutes before we get moved out of here, and uh, I, I personally like to run until they actually move us out. Are there any okay. other questions? Any other concerns? I tell people, you know, leave it, leave it up. You know, I leave it up to the people that are organizing how they get it out. They can either do it in a group, they can do Dropbox, Some folks do, a Google, uh, do a Google search, right? You, you, you know, you have so many different venues for how you want to do it. But right. you know, what, whatever you find is best to make sure that everyone gets it, because sometimes what I've done, I've put it in um, like Google Drive and given everyone a link, and I let people know, hey, you got a week to get the pictures. Get the pictures because after that week, that link disappears. Right. Pardon, that, that's that's one of the things you may want to coordinate with your photographer as well. Uh, certain photographers may have specific ways that they that they have these pictures. They may already have a site where they they have a folder that they can dedicate to this shoot. After the shoot, come back to whatever the event. I'm gonna put the link in. Come in and get your. This is this is the right. uh, folder for your pictures. Come get your shots. Mm -hmm. Right. Like for instance, um, I did a Wonder Woman shoot back in all, the end of August. The, um, the person who was running the shoot told all the photographers that to put the photo links into and all the photos into the um, into the uh, group event for that shoot, so that everybody knew. Okay, for for the photos for that shoot, we go right there to that one place, and they weren't all over the place, and we didn't have to search for everything, right. which was cool. We'll take two more questions, and then we're gonna wrap. Yes, sir. Take your time, Flash. <laughs> so, yeah, just, um, so my question is about like actually finding these uh, group cos uh, cosplays because uh, I like never know when they're happening outside of if a convention pushes yeah. it itself. That's a fun one. That's a, yeah, I I'll answer that. See, you you coordinate you coordinate this stuff. I'm the one who's usually running around like oh oh this is happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I run into that same thing. Usually I depend if, if I don't if it's something that I haven't seen prior to. I usually depend on my friends, or I listen around. I literally listen and see what's happening around the car, because like when we were doing our shoot, three or four people walked up to me and asked, "Hey, is this a DC shoot?" I'm like, "Dude, no. <laughs> this, is, this, this, this is one of the DC shoots. Probably like two or three o'clock in a different in a different area. And then two, this is the same shoot that happens every year at the same time, at the same location. And that's another thing that you should coordinate." If you plan on doing the shoot the way that you want to happen, time after time after time at a certain con or in a certain or a certain time of year, try to plan it the same weekend, the same time frame, 
that you did it the year that you're doing it that first year, so that people know, okay, I'm not bumping up against all come, shit. come fall of 2020. What's your name? Say it again. Jimnete. Yeah. I got it right, correct? Jimnete. Close enough. Close enough. Okay, cool. <laughs> that, that she's having a shoot first weekend of the fall, and it's going to be that first or second Saturday. Well, let's say the second Saturday of October at 12 o'clock. So they know every year she's having a shoot 12 o'clock, second Saturday of doggone October. They don't have to ask what time or whatever. They just have to, what's the theme? And if the theme, is cha if the theme isn't changing, okay, I know to show up in my DC costume, boom, and I'll be there, ready to go. And make, making sure, making you know, sure, and being consistent helps. It's, it's important because the very first, the very first photo shoot that I had heard of um, when I started cosplaying, I heard about it three days after the con, and I was, oh my goodness, my first, my, my first uh, uh, time appearing at a con in cosplay, I was Mr. Terrific, suit was perfect, had everything done, was ready, and I had a great time that whole weekend. A week later, I see a group photo shoot pictures from Awesome Con. I was there at the show and missed it. Oh, I saw people I knew, and I'm like, how did this happen? And I not, I had no idea. Yeah, it, it, it's how literally. How did you not tell me? Yeah, it's literally. You listen. You listen. When they say listen to the to the heart of the of of, where, of the location, listen to the heart of the location. Listen to the whispers. Because you will hear people talking about different things. Some of them you may might, might be like, okay, no, I didn't really need. But if it's a shoot related to something that you want, really wanted to do, okay, let me go like float over there around that time and see what's that really happening. Maybe I can go ahead and jump in. Another thing and get to know whoever's running it, so that next year I can know right. what's going. On. Um, if you're on Facebook or if you're in any place that do like like group chats and everything, jump into cosplay groups. Matter of fact, specifically. Jump into the Baltimore Comic Con uh, Facebook group. You can also do our Awesome Con group because half the stuff that goes on in Baltimore, I post them there too. Jump into different cosplay groups, and let's just say, like, even if there's like a Flash fan group for, for everybody that does everything Flash, uh, Flash cosplay, whatever fandom that you're a part of, jump into some of those too because sometimes those folks are organizing things for a particular con as well. And sometimes that's a better way to kind of keep up. All right, we're going to take one more question and then we're going to wrap. Is there anybody else got any other questions, comments? Anything going once, going twice, three times a lady. All right, so I want to thank all of you for coming out, taking your time to um, listen to us ramble about how to do your shoots better. Um, again, if you're on Facebook or on Instagram, you can follow me at Bishop Cosplay. If you got further questions beyond this, if you need help, heck, if you even want me to come do your shoots for you and everything, tag me. And if I'm going that, to that particular event, have camera will travel. Um, also, again, if you're on Facebook and you want to see some cosplays, we, we are getting the video of this, right? If you want to see this panel again and you want to show this panel to people, uh, again, look up the cosplay spectrum on Facebook. To hit the like button. Also, if you're a cosplayer and you want to be featured, hit us up. Yep, hit the like button, send us a message. One of us will read it, and you will get posted up. All right. So thank I think you we all. post people up daily, right? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. yeah, just about. Yeah. All right. Thank you.